Old books are one of the best resources for collage art material, and they're not too hard to come across. There's used book sales, there is secondhand shops like Goodwill, for example, or maybe you even have some around your home that you could possibly utilize. In today's video, I'm talking about eight creative ways to use old book pages in your collage art. Which one is my favorite? I'll show you and I'll demonstrate why I think it's such a useful way to use papers. So I'm probably not going to be demonstrating any new techniques, new ideas. You know it all already. But what I'm hoping to do in this video is to remind you of these ideas and for you to say, oh yeah, I, I, I can do that. I know how to do that so that you can use them in your collage art and in your junk journals. So the first creative way I want to talk about is to add book page as the background to your collage. Now typically book pages are pretty thin, so you would be adding it to a substrate, something like a file folder, for example, as you put down that layer. In this example here, I have two pieces of book page and a piece of craft paper. And the purpose of this background was that I wanted three pieces and I wanted them to slightly contrast in colors. So I have this beautiful text in a language that uses a different alphabet than in English. Then I have a piece of English text and then this piece of craft. Now with these two, obviously I was looking for contrast. So this is a really nice beige color and then you've got a kind of a white or a cream. And then with the craft, it's very dark. And I didn't have craft paper with text on it. So what I did was I took a rubber stamp and I, I didn't use this one, but you get the idea. Something that had writing on it and it was different from the alpha this alphabet text and this alphabet text and you know I, I added that bit so we've got three different colors and three different types of text and then for the focus of the collage I have this hero piece and then I have these two pieces on the side that are kind of complementing complementing with the colors with the blues and the browns Here's more brown, right? So I'm always asking myself what things are going to complement and what is going to compete. This I wanted to be the focus. So these I wanted to make sure that they're not competing with this one. These shades of brown just kind of pull everything together. And that's why I think that this collage turned out well. Now talking about foundations of a collage, so an altered book can be a great way of having text pages as the basis, the foundation of your collages that you build on top of. So you take an old book and you've got these pages and you are adding to the pages with additional materials to collage with. Here sometimes I have kept original part of the page showing you can sit, kind of see in these little pieces here at the top or these images, but other times I have completely covered over the entire thing. The next technique I want to talk about for using old book pages is this layering and tearing technique. So what I've done is I've created a collage on a cereal box and what I did was I layered a bunch of different papers and the papers all came from the same source except for this one. The only thing that I did differently was change the orientation back and forth of these guys in a perpendicular way. So what would I do with something like this? I'm not sure yet. Um, it's going to be my background, obviously. I think that I would put something here and do pretty much a simple collage because the background is very busy. So maybe just one or three, you know, 
objects on here. Here's something similar that I did. The background pages are all different colored background pages. And then I just have one large piece in the middle with a smaller piece. And then this rubber stamping is the third piece that adds. Do I always do things in threes? No, not always in threes, but I like to have at least an odd number of something. So maybe I would go to five instead of three. Two things is not enough, I think. I think a minimum of three collage um, focal points is, is a good thing to have. But for this background piece, I am still kind of playing with my ideas. I'm not quite sure what I would like to do with it, but I really love the way this has kind of created a pattern of its own just by, you know, turning these little pieces of book page. I wanted to show you this little collection of papers that I have. These are, a lot of them are end pieces off of, you know, book pages that I used and I didn't need. Um, they were just, they're just scraps, just leftover scraps. And these are really great things to use for, you know, texture when you're, when you want to create a collage and you're just layering the different papers because they're just slightly different in color. And that slight variation is pretty much all you need for making an interesting background. The next creative way to use old book page is to incorporate found text in your collages. And unfortunately, I don't have a great example of this because I am too lazy to do it. But what I'm talking about is if you take a piece of book page here, this is a, a dictionary, for example, and you are deliberate about what you are highlighting or the paper, the text that is written there. Say, for example, I wanted to highlight this word light uh, because I was doing a collage about, you know, lamps or lighting or that was my theme somehow. So I would choose a text page that would highlight this in some way. Or say that you have a favorite novel or book and that you chose a piece of text out of that favorite novel and you use it in a collage in this way. It's all the more special, all the more meaningful because you have, you know, words that are directly related to the collage that you're making. Some people are really good about cutting out specific words and then assembling them into um, kind of points of interest on a collage. That's also interesting. Or I've also seen people take a full page and then either block out everything else that is not important, but some, some way to highlight very specific words. So they'll either just circle those specific words or they will, you know, use a black line and just cross out everything else so that only those words are showing. So there are all kinds of clever and unique ways to use text creatively in your collages. Another creative way to use old book pages is to cut out the actual images rather than the text. These are some examples of collages from my friend Pamela. She very often likes to use these dictionary pages from La Roche dictionary, French dictionaries, and they have so many wonderful illustrations, small and bigger ones. So if you were ever looking online uh, on Etsy or eBay, for example, you can look up these, di these dictionaries. So these are samples of illustrations that are interesting. Then of course, you know, there are any kinds of topics in different books that might be of interest to you. Here's a really simple collage made with a dictionary page illustration from a Webster's dictionary. So uh, I've got a background piece and then 
three pieces of collage papers. This one, this one, and this one. This line drawing came from an encyclopedia, a children's encyclopedia. For my next way of using book pages, I needed to pull out my junk journals to show you some examples. And here, right away, I can see book pages that have been incorporated to covers. Um, I talked about this in my one of my previous videos about texture, so I'll put the link about that if you're interested to see how I made these book covers. But what I want to talk about here is using some kind of border or frame on your page. So here I've kind of done a pocket with book page and pattern paper. And let me show you some other examples. I've got this one here. So it's book page that has been punched and then pattern paper over the top. Here's another example of a piece of book page on top of tissue paper. And it's just folded right over the top. Here is another example. This is just kind of washi tape on top of the book page. So I really like to do these pockets and junk journals. They're so effective when you add a couple of different types of papers for this. This is punched and then an additional piece of construction paper is put on that one. And this one turned out really nicely. It's book page with pattern paper and then a piece of ribbon. So this is a pocket as well. So how do I do this? How do I make this so that they are exactly the same? Let me show you. All right, so here I have a piece of book page and I have just a piece of contrasting paper. You can use any kind of paper that you want to use. Maybe you have a printable, maybe you have just pattern paper out of a big block of um, you know background papers. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure they are the same height. So I will cut off just a little bit of the second paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one on top of the other and I'm going to very carefully tear them by hand, rip them just by controlling how I tear like this. Now you can make it as jaggedy or as straight as you want, but these are right on top of each other. Now when I move it over like this, you can see that they are a copy of each other. So I could do it this way, or if I wanted to have this in the background and then this color on the top, I could do it that way as well. It's a preference, whatever you want. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go like this. So let's say I want to use this in a junk journal. Let's say I want to have it right in here. I want this to be a pocket. So I have to decide where I want the crease to be. So I can take a little pencil, for example, and just mark it how far I want it to come out from the page. And now I'm able to fold this in half so that I know where the crease is. And it doesn't need to be exactly precise. You know, it's just a, an estimate. And then if I wanted this on the top and then I know where the crease is, then I can also do the same thing here. OK, 
Okay. So now I have this like this. And then I would just double sided tape on the top and on the bottom. Now for the other side, I know that I want it more or less the same. So I want the tear for the purple one to be about right here. And I want the tear for the book page to be about right here. So then I'm gonna line these two back up just like that, just like that. Now, if I had a paper clip, I might paper clip the other side so that it's holding tight, but I don't have a paper clip at my desk right here, so I'm just gonna do the best that I can. So I'm now gonna very carefully tear and kind of move it around a little bit. I'm controlling the tear, but I want it to be a little jagged. Oops, this is turned a little bit, so straighten that out. Okay. So now I can line this back up, and I have this framed pocket. Okay. So that's kind of a neat thing to do. All right, another creative way to use old book pages is to add some paint or other mixed media to it. So say for example that you have a piece that you want to use in a collage, and this is just a old piece of postcard, and you want to use it on your book page, but also have some color added to it. I have a stencil that I want to add in the background of the book page so that the colors kind of come from this postcard. So I have some pinks and I have some ivories. I don't know what would be the best, so I'm just going to take, just to kind of show you, I'm going to take a couple of different colors and see what's going to be a good fit. I have a feeling that this light rose is a better choice, but let's see. Yeah, here's the colors that I have on here. I think this kind of darker rose is not necessarily going to be a good fit, but we can experiment and see. So I have this brush, kind of a stippling brush, and let me start with the lighter one first. Let's do the lighter on the edges and then the pink maybe toward the middle. So that's one of the creams. Now I'm taking the second cream. And then I will put the darker pink at the petals. It's kind of interesting. And then if I have this, I would probably stick with the lighter pink. But anyway, you get the idea. You can use any kind of acrylic paint that you've got and a stencil and a brush. And adding that bit of color really helps to enhance whatever you know, piece that you are putting onto your collage. Now that question that I always ask myself is something competing versus complementing. That would be a valid question to ask here as well. I don't want this color to compete with this. I want the color to complement this. So that's why this bright, vibrant pink would not be a good fit in this case, unless I really covered up most of it with this centerpiece, um, hero piece of the collage. Now I could actually go back in, match it up and cover over it with the lighter pink. 
let me see if I can if that would work or even or even with the with the cream colored first and see if that does anything if I'm not happy with it it's just a single piece of text page that I could probably throw out and not feel too guilty about. But let's see what happens if I add this layer. That's nice. I like that. It's definitely a better fit for combining with this. So you could take this same stencil and do it from the bottom edge as well, or, you know, just play with different patterns on the page and then just have this as the background. Now, the next example I have for using a old book page creatively is to run it through your printer and print something on your book page. So naturally you need to have an idea of what it is that you want to print onto your book page. And there's a couple of things that you have to pay attention to. First is how busy is the text or whatever that's on your book page. Remember again that idea of complementing and competing. If you have a lot of text and it's super busy, on your page, if you add something onto, if you print something onto your page, it could be that it gets lost inside the text. And I've seen this before in something like a dictionary page. If you try and print something on a dictionary page that's already super busy to begin with, it's just overwhelmed by everything else that's happening on the page. So here you could use, you know, something like um, a poem or text that's a little bit larger. This was from a children's book. Another idea is to use um, music, sheet music, something like this. And also remember that you have these end pages at the beginning and at the end of your book that are completely blank. And... These are really nice to work with. If you are interested in printing something, you know, special, unique, and you just want the aged paper from behind. So in this case, what I would do is tear it out and then somehow carefully glue it onto a piece of copy paper that can be put into the feeder of your printer. Say this is, for example, you know, a piece of paper. So you could take your book page and you could either lightly glue it, or I've seen the spray adhesive that you would spray onto the back of this and then, you know, press it down so that there are no pieces that are coming up. Or I would just take a glue stick actually um, and, and glue it down, right? I don't have a colored printer at home, otherwise I would demonstrate uh, what it would look like if I could put something through a printer. I have printed things in the past, but they are just black and white. If I did black and white on here, I think that um, there really wouldn't be a good contrast with the black text that is already here. But you get the idea that what I'm talking about. Now, the last idea for creative ways that you can use old book pages is with ink and a rubber stamping. This technique is by far my favorite way to use book pages. I like to use ink and rubber stamping because I can control the color scheme of what is happening on my page. Just like this concept of using paint in particular color that I want to have work with a piece of collage paper in the middle, I can do the same thing with a rubber stamping and the very specific color of ink that would match whatever I am working with 
on my collage. So first let me show you some examples of, of um, rubber stamping and ink. Now with these, these um, ink pads I'm able to very deliberately ink in the spaces that I want. So let me do this first. Now say I have this book page. I ha I'm looking kind of for an area that doesn't have a lot of text so that I can place it and it's going to show up nicely. Okay, that turned out very nicely. Just for the sake of experimenting, let's see what happens if I use a super busy dic dictionary page as a background. Okay, now, it, it it's obviously a personal choice. You know, what works for you, what doesn't. This is pretty busy. The background is pretty busy, but it could work in a collage. This is much more precise. You can see the individual lines, whereas here you cannot so much. So it's all preference of, you know, what you like. And it's experimentation, right? It's, it's practicing on a scrap to see if this is something that you like and that you want to use or not. Here is another example. I used this with black ink on a dictionary page. And it's, it's a little difficult to see what it is. You'd have to kind of study it and look at it um, to know what it is. So that might be a little bit more, you know, I don't think that would work too well. Now I had this whole envelope full of scraps, if you remember. So here is another great way to use these scraps. These are old vintage pieces of paper. And if you stamp something on here, they will look pretty darn good. Let me try this one. Look how, look how just beat up and creased this is. Let's see what happens if I add a rubber, rubber stamping to this. So I will use black ink. There, that's really nice. That's really nice. Let me take my scissors and cut this off. Well, actually I'll just tear it. Now I could go ahead and use it someplace in one of my collages. I can also work backwards, say, I'm looking at this collage, and if I look closely at this center image of a country gentleman, he has an umbrella in this kind of a green blue aqua color, and then he's got this red, <laughs> looks like a lunch pail. Um, it's a sack of some sort. So if I want to do some kind of rubber stamping on an old book page, Actually, I'll use this same leftover piece and I want to match this color red. So the closest I have is this red here. So I'm going to take this stamp and ink it up really well. And now I will stamp it on here. I guess it doesn't matter which side, but I'll just I'll just stay right here. Okay. Here's what it looks like. Very nice. So let me tear it out. 
I want it to seem kind of like a crease that happened naturally. There we go. Now I can add it to my collage just like this. I could do two or I could cut it in half and do one on top and one on bottom. Do I want it on the left side? Do I want it on the right side? Top or bottom? Right in the center? Whatever, right? I mean, that's a, a little decision I'll have to think about and make. Um, but you get the idea that you can take an old book page and then very deliberately choose the color that you want to add onto your entire collage in order to do what? Remember, competing and complementing. We want to complement this main piece right here. Okay. Now, could I do something with a dark green possibly? Something else down here? Sure, absolutely. Um, I don't know what else. Oh, actually, and I had this. I could use this. That might be something as well, like that. So depending on the ink that you use and the rubber stamp that you choose, you actually can control how your collage develops if you don't have a lot of paper pieces that already can work in the collage that you're trying to build. So let me know in the comments, what are some other ways that you can use old book pages in your collage art? And if this video has been useful to you, please do hit the like button so that it can spread to more people. I am thinking about doing a video about envelopes, a whole bunch of different ways that you can use envelopes in your collage art and in your junk journals. So I'll probably work on that in the near future to have out soon. In the meantime, here is another technique video that may be of interest to you.